You want to believe a lying doctrine from John MacArthur that says the perfect has come, the canon of scriptures? Liar! Liar! Anyone that teaches from John MacArthur all the way down is a liar! The gifts of the Spirit did not cease at the death of the apostles. It did not cease at the canon of scriptures. The gifts of the Spirit are still here. We're still in the latter days. These liars and hypocrites. You might preach well, but where's the power? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. How can you deny the prophetic voice and say, I'm led of the Spirit? You ain't led of nothing but the flesh. You ain't hearing nothing. You're not hearing nothing if you deny His voice. When He speaks to you in the midnight hour and says, wake up and pray. Did the Bible say that? Was your name written in the book of John? Say, hey, George, wake up at 12 o'clock, 2022, July 23rd, and pray at 4 a.m. in the morning. Was that, was that the, is that the flesh? Is that a scripture? Or is that the voice of the Holy Ghost? Hey, man, it's Pastor David Lynn, and today we're talking about walking in the Spirit. It's such a beautiful thing to walk with God. Many of us came from a difficult past where we walked in the flesh and we did everything wrong and we reaped what we sowed. We reaped destruction. But how much more greater would it be to walk in the spirit and reap eternal life? Today we're going to be talking about that at Christ Forgiveness Ministries. Stay tuned because God wants you to walk in the spirit. The passage we're going to start out today with is Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. I'd like you to turn there, verses 16 to 24. If you have it in your Bibles or on your smartphone, you can pull up the Bible. It's good that you pay attention in the Bible because I could be saying lies. Amen. You know, you, you can't just take people's words for it. You got to test and see and make sure. That's how you get faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But if you're not sure, that it's in the word of God, your faith will have no substance. So please follow along in the word of God and pray about what I'm saying. Seek the Lord and study the word. Be like a Berean that studies to see if what Pastor David is saying is true so that your faith would be unhindered. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 says as follows. And I'm reading from the King James Version. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts, desires, fights against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. They're contrary enemies of each other. So that you cannot do the things that you want to. Okay? Very important verse, and I'm going to go slowly. But if, verses 18, you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you're led of the Spirit... You are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are clear. They're manifest. I mean, something goes on on the inside and they come out. It's, it's manifest. You can see it. It's obvious. Adultery. Fornication uncleanness, lasciviousness. If you don't know the meaning of words, you need to look them up in the dictionary. Even in the church. If you don't know what lasciviousness means, look it up in the dictionary. If you don't know what adultery is, look it up in the dictionary. Fornication, you don't know what it is, look it up in the dictionary. You don't know what uncleanness means, I got to pray for you. Idolatry, witchcraft, 
Hatred. Who do you hate? Who's in your heart? Who won't you let go of that past circumstance? That thing that they did to you? Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envy. Who do you envy today? Murder. Go back to the envy. Who are you watching? Watching them like... Like all, all, all you care about is what they have. Murder. Drunkenness. Revelings. And such like that. Things like that. Behaviors like that. This is the manifest work of the flesh. It doesn't come from the spirit. When you do those kinds of things, that's not spiritual. Doesn't matter if the pastor does it. Doesn't matter if you do it, your best friend, your mom, your dad. It is not coming from heaven. It's coming from the flesh. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things will not inherit the kingdom of of God. But the fruit, the manifestations, what's clear that comes from the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, is love, joy, peace. Now, love. Joy, peace. You don't have peace inside the things you do. That means your decision is not of the spirit. You're with a boyfriend, girlfriend, and you're doubting all the time. It's not from the spirit. Something is warning you. A red flag, stop sign, stop in your tracks. Don't go that way. That's not from the spirit. It's birthed out of the flesh. It's birthed from the flesh when there's no peace. Patience. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Faith, faith. Whatever is not of faith, the Bible says, is sin. Faith comes from the Spirit. Those who are not walking in faith are not walking in the Spirit. Faith is the fruit of the Spirit. You know a spiritual church by their faith. You know, a flesh-based church by their lack of faith. Talking to somebody here today. All that means, saints of God, is when our church has no faith, that means there's a lot of flesh. That's the manifestation of the flesh. It's not the spirit. I don't care how holy people are. You see, I get written off, and I wrote a post on Instagram recently about some Reformed believers. Now, it's not every Reformed believer. I have some Reformed beliefs. In fact, they're not Reformed beliefs. They're biblical beliefs. I believe in the assurance of salvation. I believe that you can know that you're saved. I believe that. If we couldn't know that we were saved, we would be like the Muslims and the Hindus and everybody else out there wondering and searching, trying to do good works to work it up. I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ is what atones.
for my sin and for your sin, and we can be sure once we accept Him that we are saved. I believe in that. I believe we can stand firm. Not because Pastor David said so, but he says, I give unto them eternal life. And no one shall take it out of the, uh, no, 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 no man can pluck them out of my hands. The Father gave them to me, and He's greater than all. He says, For God so loved the world, there's something that you can hold on to when you believe and you have that evidence of your belief. So I believe in that. I believe it's by His blood alone. There's no other way that we can be saved. There's no other man, there's no other place, there's no other way. Unto God except by Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross. It's His death, burial, and resurrection that puts us in a position before God and we are sanctified. You see, that's not my problem. That's not my problem. My problem is when people come around. They look all holy on the outside. They have their T's and their P's or their Q's or their I's dotted. They have the externals. It looks holy. But you notice the Bible doesn't say here in Galatians chapter 5 that one of the fruits of the Spirit are how well you look on the outside. Or how well you dress, or whether you have socks on, whether you got a good haircut. Yes, there's places for that. Yes, it comes out in some way, but that's not what it's saying in this verse. Some people can look the part. They can show a smile. And unfortunately, there's churches out there where the pastors and their congregants are saying so much theology. And they write off the people that walk in faith. But when you ask them, do you see the manifest power of God in your life? And the answer is no. When you ask them, do you believe that it's for today? And the answer is no. When you ask them, do you believe in the casting out of demons? They say, well, 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 you know, I don't believe you can. I believe God can. But what they're really saying is they don't believe the grace of God can be given to man to cast out a demon. Amen. These liars and hypocrites, they deny the very Holy Ghost. They deny the power of God. They deny the Lord that bought them. You see, you see, it's interesting because there's heresies that deny Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Islam is a heresy. Jehovah Witnesses is a heresy. Denies the divinity of Jesus Christ. Even the oneness theology, as much as you see them emphasizing the name of Jesus, they, all, they, they don't believe in the Son. They believe in the Father. They believe everything is the Father. But the Bible says that Jesus prayed unto the Father. There is a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost according to the Bible. But there's a movement that denies the Holy Ghost. And they will find every reason to prove you false. When you believe and practice the gifts of the Spirit. They'll point to people that have long deliverances. And say, well, if the power of God was here like it was then, it wouldn't take so long. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ called 12 disciples and his disciples tried so hard on this one man and, and they couldn't cast out the demon and they came back to Jesus and, and they said, Lord, we can't cast out this demon. What is going on? I want you to know that Jesus authorized them, gave them the power and the authority to cast out demons and heal the sick. But there was one situation that they came back, they couldn't do it. Now, this is as early as we can get in the first century. How much more sometimes is there a struggle 2,000 years later when Jesus said, will he find faith on the earth? We're in the last days where faith is weak. Love is weak. But imagine being at the time of Jesus Christ where Jesus himself said, go and heal the sick. 
Knowing that the angels obey Jesus, knowing that the anointing, the presence of God, the very God in flesh, Emmanuel, was there, told his disciples to go, and his disciples went, and they couldn't cast out a demon. Imagine the questions in their mind. Is Jesus who he really says he is? You see, nowadays, this generation, we have people criticizing People that cast out demons criticizing the gifts of the Spirit and would even come, come from a Pentecostal church and leave and go to a church that's dead. I know a few of them. Because they themselves are dead on the inside. They were not trusting in the Spirit. They didn't understand the mysteries of God. But they had an appearance of godliness. It looked all nice on the outside. It looked pretty. You see, it's not, it doesn't take much to organize a church. Jehovah Witnesses do it every day. It doesn't take much to organize evangelism teams. Mormons do it better than any Pentecostal church. It doesn't take much to have a big building and have a choir and, and, and put it all together. Businesses have great things going on. Rogers Cable dominates so much. Bell Canada. They can put everything together. They're smart. But that doesn't mean they're walking in the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean they're walking with God. That doesn't mean they're moving by the Spirit. It means they're moving by the best of the flesh, the best that flesh can offer. So how do you know the different saints of God? I stopped on one point, but this faith, Jesus highlighted one thing to these disciples that came back anointed by Jesus Christ himself and couldn't walk in the power. They didn't know what was going on. And Jesus said to them one simple thing, O oh, ye of little faith. He said, O oh, ye of little faith to the twelve disciples. O oh, ye of little faith. Some people wrongly believe that, that everything in the early church was just like a, like a magic that just wanded the wand. That was not the case. Because even Paul the Apostle, a man, of, mighty man of God, left somebody sick. And we don't know what was the story. Maybe he was about to get better. Maybe the faith was weak. Maybe Paul's faith was tried. We don't know. We can only speculate. But it wasn't that the power of God wasn't there. It wasn't that God is not able to heal the sick. No, it wasn't. Jesus pointed to one thing, and he said it to his disciples, O oh, ye of little faith, faith. Jesus doesn't lie. He said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, move, and it shall move. But how many of us can move the mountains? How many of us have tried to walk on water? Is it that we can't? Is it that... Is it that God's power and his word is false? No, it's that we have little faith. We're not even at the place yet as a church to do those kinds of things. But does it mean that God is not a miracle working God? Does it mean that his spirit is not here today? No, his spirit is ever present. But is he present in your life? Is he present in your life? Jesus didn't lie. He said, when two agree on anything, it shall be done. Whatever you, you have, you, whatever you pray with faith, it shall be done. Ask, and you shall receive that your joy might be full. This is the teachings of the Word of God. These are authentic scriptures from Jesus' own mouth. This isn't Pastor David. It's not a Pentecostal teaching. It's the Word of God. And if you're a literalist like me, if you believe in the Word of God then you have to hold it true. You may not be there today, but I suggest to you that if you're a believer in Christ, you'll be there tomorrow. Because the believers in Christ go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And how do we get there? It's a faith journey. The, 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 it, it says here, we walk by faith and not by faith. We walk by faith. We walk by faith. So it says the fruit of the Spirit is faith. 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 
I'll continue and I'm going to go into my message. Meekness. Temperance. And against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with His affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. I wonder today if CFM is walking by the Spirit or are we walking by the flesh? Are we walking by faith or are we walking by fear? Are we walking in power or are we walking powerless? Are we walking in the flesh, arguing, gossiping, not praying, not being temperate, not being patient? Smith Wigglesworth, a man that was quoted, witnessed by many people for doing hundreds of thousands of miracles. Hundreds of thousands of miracles. Healings, deliverances, and he's not the only one. People like Reinhard Bunke, even right from the pulpit, he would preach and people would get healed. He'd have, he'd have conferences with a million people in Africa going all around the world. Reinhard Bunke, a German man. So many people witnessed his ministry. But Smith Wigglesworth said this. He said, God wants to purify our mind until we can bear all things and believe all things. Hope all things and endure all things. Isn't that what the Bible says is love? Love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I mean, you know, when, when you think about it in a relationship terms, you're married or you're dating somebody, and the Bible says love believes all things. Now, what that usually means in a relationship is that you're giving your partner the benefit of the doubt. You're believing what's good in their life. You're not believing the lies. You're not believing the, the voices in your head. You're not believing those things. You're believing in your spouse. You choose to believe the best, not the worst. Even when your flesh says one thing, the spirit inside of you says another. This is love. You believe all things. You hope all things. You see, when you love somebody and you have hope and you're hoping all things, that means when it's bankrupt, when everything is messy, you still have something to hold on to in hope, believing, because you love them. Your love is genuine. When your love is tested, it stands the test of time. This is love. Hopes all things, not some things, all things. And it endures all things. But let's apply that to God. The Bible says the first commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So how do we apply this to God? Love believes all things. Wow, come on somebody. I don't know if you're seeing this with me, but if you love God, you will believe all things for God. That means when you're walking in the valley of the shadow of death, you believe the best about God. You believe that he's going to bring you through that valley. You believe that when you're sick, my God is a healer because he said so. You believe all things. You see, when you believe all things for your wife or for your partner, you believe it to a point in the limitation of a human being. You believe all things in a marriage. You believe all things in a dating relationship. You believe all things in an engagement relationship. But when you approach it to God, you can't be a real believer believing in God with all your heart and deny that He has the power to heal, that He has the power to deliver, that He has the power to save. Because my God, His hand is not too short that it can't save. You must believe all things. Hope all things with God. What are you hoping with God? What are you hoping? What are you enduring with God? Endures all things. This is my entry point to the beginning of this message. He says here, Smith Wigglesworth, but you cannot have this divine power until you live and walk in the Holy Ghost until the power of the new life is greater than the old life. 
Think of that for a moment. He says here, God wants your mind to bear, believe, hope, endure all things with God and in life. But it can't happen until His divine power lives and walks in you by the Holy Ghost. And the new life is greater than the old. What does the old life say? You see, we got to be careful of our education system today. Our old life says to be skeptical about everything. Don't trust anybody. Our experiences say we can't put our trust in a book. We can't trust leaders. We can't trust nothing. And so we become skeptical and faithless, loveless, hopeless. We give up. We're taught to give up. We're taught not to press in. We're taught that if we don't get it now, it's not for me. This is the world. This is worldly thinking. How many churches are thinking worldly? No wonder they're giving in to the worldly appetites. No wonder they're doing things opposite to the Word. No wonder they're not evangelizing. No wonder they're not praying in tongues and seeking God. And pro No wonder because the world has influenced and infiltrated the churches of the world. They're walking in flesh. And so they don't see the power. They don't see it. They're thinking like the world. But Smith Wigglesworth says that the Holy Ghost has to be so powerful in you. The new life has to be so powerful in you. Much greater than the old life. And we see that comparison in Galatians chapter 5. This is what flesh looks like. This is what spirit looks like. Smith Wigglesworth also said this. He says, real faith has perfect peace and joy and a shout at any time. It always sees the victory. Isn't that interesting? Real faith has perfect peace and joy and a shout at all times. You see, when your faith is perfected, you can praise God. You see, one of the evidences... That the Spirit of God lives inside of you. That God has deposited something inside of you. Is your praise. Is your praise. The flesh does not praise God. I'm going to make it clear. The flesh does not praise God. The flesh doesn't want to praise God. How can it? The flesh wants its own appetite. Its own pleasures. It wants, it wants everything but God, it's contrary to the things of the Spirit. But praise, Psalms 40, in the Word of God says, He has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. It's a deposit. Another scripture says in the book of Psalms, says this, it says, I'll just read it here one second here. Hallelujah. It says here in the Gospels, it says that he has perfected praise in the mouth of babes and sucklings. He has perfected praise in the mouth of babes and sucklings. And we're talking about walking in the Spirit. But a big part of that starts with faith. We can't walk in the Spirit unless we have faith. Why has God perfected praise in the mouth of babes and sucklings, babies and infants, newborns? What does that mean? Well, I remember when I first gave my life to the Lord, how on fire I was. I was excited for everything about God. I would tell everybody about Jesus. I never read the entire Bible. I didn't know what I was talking about. I couldn't win Muslims or Hindus or anything. All I knew was I was saved from my sin and you need to turn away from your sin and believe in Jesus. That's all I knew. And that's all I preached. And I told everybody everywhere that I went about Jesus. Now, 
when we get older in the faith and we start learning tactics and techniques and how to speak properly, we look back at those moments and say, oh man, what a goof. I didn't say this right. I remember in those days when someone asked me a question about the Bible, it would take me literally 20 minutes to find something in the Bible. I remember people going up, what does the Bible say about drinking? You know, it says something. Give me one second. And I would spend 20 minutes, literally. And he was like, did you find it yet? No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. And I'd go through the entire Bible. I'd, I'd literally be doing speed reading. Wine, wine, something, something. And anything that came up, here you go. <laughs> I didn't know the full context, the fullness of scriptures. But I just knew that God was against certain things. So I, I, I just found something. Now when I look back, then I say, man, I really didn't know what I was talking about. But you know what? My heart was full of praise. My heart was full of peace and joy. I want so many souls to Jesus because they saw the power of God on my life. So what am I saying here today? Why would God use babies and sucklings who don't know anything to praise God? You know why? Because God's not worried so much about your fleshly mistakes. He's more worried about your heart. I'm going to say that again. God's not so much worried. I'm not saying God's not going to fix your mistakes. He is. He's going to fix you all up. But He's not so much worried about that because He knows that we fail. But He also knows that if your heart is in the right place, it doesn't matter how educated you are. It doesn't matter whether you went to seminary or you have a degree or you have a diploma or your job is a janitor. None of that matters in the eyes of God. As long as you have a humble and a contrite heart, the Bible says he will not despise you. David didn't have it all together. David was a messed up man. Scholars think he had 12 plus wives. And even then, as the king, he still wanted somebody else's wife. And he didn't want to do it in secret and run away. He decided to kill the husband and take the wife as well. Talk about a messed up man. That's a messed up man. What's even more messed up is Solomon. God already knew Solomon's tendency and weakness. 1,000 women. You, you can't, if, if, you, if you decide to have 1,000 women in your life, that's three years, and you get to see them once. That's messed up. How can you be a, a good husband and you leave your wife in the corner for three years and say, Honey, I love you. I'll see you in three years. <laughs> I'll see you in three years. Because I got my other wife I got to go to. If I don't go to her, that's messed up. David was messed up. Solomon was messed up. But what did God say about David? He's a man after my own heart. He had a heart of faith, of humility. He was broken when the presence of God came. You see, you know somebody is ready for the Spirit of God when they're broken before the Lord. You can't walk in the Spirit when you're in the flesh and you're not broken about your sin. That's why I don't care what those crazy people that call themselves Christians say you don't need to repent of your sin. You know why? Because Acts chapter 3 verses 19 says, Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. How can you walk in the power and the presence of God unless you're broken about your sin? How can you walk in the power of God when you have pride in your heart and you're saying, I'm going to hold on to everything that distances me from God, but I believe in Jesus. Saints of God, if you're going to walk in the Spirit, there needs to be faith. And faith points you to a holy God, who He is, 
The Bible says whoever comes to God must believe that he is. Is what? That he just exists? Okay, that's wonderful. Everybody believes that God exists. The devils believe that God exists. They have faith. They know God exists. That's not what God's saying. Whoever comes to God must believe that he is the healer. He is the doctor. He is the lawyer. He is the creator. He is the sustainer, the provider. Everything that God said he is, you must believe it with your whole heart if you're going to receive it. You believe he's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and you need to believe that and you need to press in until you receive that. That's what faith looks like. It looks like somebody that's not willing to give up. He puts praise in the mouth of babes and sucklings. It's better sometimes not to know so much. You see, some people know too much for their own good. You ever see somebody that knows too much for their own good? They're Mr. and Mrs. Smarty Pants. You know? You can, you, you can, you can receive the power of God. Well, well, have you ever heard of dispensationalism? You know, we're under this dispensation of grace. and That was the dispensation of Paul. This was the dispensation of Jesus. And, and you know, back then, and, and the apostles received the grace, but we don't receive it today. You know too much for your own good, brother. You ever heard of speaking in tongues? Well, well, you know, if you look, look at the, the book of Acts chapter 2, they spoke in known languages and, and, and you know, uh, all, all, all this stuff out here is, is jibber-jabber and, 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 you know, and you, you know. But what about 1 Corinthians chapter 14 where they... Pray in unknown tongue. He who prays in unknown tongue speaks unto men, but unto God. Well, 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 let's not look at that one. Let's look at Acts chapter 2. Well, what about Acts chapter 10? What, Acts, what about Acts chapter 19? Well, you know what? I'm a reformed believer, so, so it doesn't matter what you believe. You, you, you cra charismatics are crazy. You know too much for your own good. Sometimes you need to unlearn some stuff to receive from God. You have to unlearn your faithless, doubtful thinking in order to walk in the Spirit. You see, when you have faith in a God who can do all things, then why would you limit God to a generational gap? When did God say, I'm the same yesterday I've changed for the last 1,600 years, and I will remain like that until I come. When did God say that? I don't remember God putting that in Scripture. The Scripture that I know, Jesus said, the Word of God says, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if He was the same then, He has the same mind now. If he wanted them to be filled with the Holy Ghost, then he wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost now. And if he wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost now, he wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost later. Some of y'all don't have faith. Listen to me, saints of God. You need to understand something. Any theologian, or rather any atheist teacher can read the Bible and tell you what it says. Some people that don't even believe in God can follow the principles of the Bible. People from the Anglican Church, the United Church, they don't even believe that this is real, but they say, well, there's good principles in the Bible, so therefore I'm going to follow it. And so you have priests and a whole congregation of people reading the Bible, following the principles of the Bible, but do they have the Spirit of God? Absolutely not. What happened to the Pharisees? People that knew the Scriptures better than anybody else. They read the Scripture, quoted the Scripture, went to synagogue, fasted and prayed, weared everything that they were required to do. But when they bumped into Jesus Christ, they couldn't figure Him out. And some of them even blasphemed the Spirit and rejected Him and put the Messiah that the Scriptures speak about to death. Which is what Peter, Peter said. You put the prince of life to death whom we are all witnesses. How can you read the scripture and not be led of the spirit very easily? 
Because just because you read the Scripture, it doesn't mean the Spirit that wrote the Scripture is inside of your heart. Doesn't mean that. You see, some people hear a good word from Oprah Winfrey or somebody out there. Okay, I'm listening. But it doesn't make them. It doesn't make them exactly like her or have the same spirit as her necessarily. Just because you hear the word of God, it doesn't mean you have the spirit. You see, if you have the spirit, you will never deny the gift of prophecy for today. Never. Impossible. Anybody that denies the spirit of God, the spirit of prophecy for today, you don't have the spirit of God. I will say that straight up because the Bible says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. The Bible even says in the book of Revelations that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. You can't have the spirit of God living inside of you and be guided by the spirit if you don't believe in prophecy. Because if you're guided by the spirit, that means you're hearing the voice of God. And how can just because you read the Bible, you need to still interpret the Bible. You still need to have the right doctrine of the Bible. And some people read the Bible, preach the Bible, but have the wrong doctrine of the Bible. When they came to Jesus Christ, they said, what manner of teaching and doctrine is this? He doesn't teach like the scribes and the Pharisees, but he teaches with authority. That's a different doctrine altogether. You see, the believers in Christ, the doctrine they have is the doctrine of authority. Hallelujah. I, why, why, the place went silent all of a sudden. <laughs> Hallelujah. The doctrine we have is the doctrine of authority. No wonder, no wonder they casted out demons. No wonder they healed the sick. No wonder they walked in faith. No wonder they did supernatural miracles. And you know what? For those of you today that I just need to teach you and teach you something biblical and in the early church, you need to understand something true today. The gifts of the Spirit, the miraculous gifts, speaking in tongues, prophecy, was in operation all the way until roughly around the 300s of the early church. It didn't cease at the apostles' death. So get that out of your mind. I don't know where you, what, what Baptist teacher taught you that. It's unbiblical and it's not true. It's not true. The gifts of the Spirit were still in operation. The texts of the Word of God were all recorded by 100 A.D. And passed around, circulated... People had different canons and so forth. And all the way into the 1600s, they were disputing about what books should be in the Bible. There was different canons. Even till this day, the Orthodox Church has one. Catholics have one. Uh, Protestants have one. They used to include the Apocrypha. There wasn't just 66 books in the Bible in 1611. Did you know that? Even Martin Luther was questioning the book of James. He questioned the book of Hebrews, but he wasn't right. People were disputing about the canon all the way into the 1600s. So what belief do you want to believe? You want to believe that when the perfect has come, which is clearly Jesus, you want to believe a lying doctrine from John MacArthur that says the perfect has come, the canon of scriptures? Liar! Liar! Anyone that teaches from John MacArthur all the way down is a liar! The gifts of the Spirit did not cease at the death of the apostles. It did not cease at the canon of scriptures. The gifts of the Spirit are still here. We're still in the latter days. These liars and hypocrites. You might preach well, but where's the power? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. How can you deny the prophetic voice and say, I'm led of the Spirit? You ain't led of nothing but the flesh. You ain't hearing nothing. You're not hearing nothing if you deny His voice. When He speaks to you in the midnight hour and says, wake up and pray. Did the Bible say that? 
Was your name written in the book of John? Say, hey, George, wake up at 12 o'clock, 2022, July 23rd, and pray at 4 a.m. in the morning. Was that, was that the, is that the flesh? Is that a scripture? Or is that the voice of the Holy Ghost? Yes, it's the voice of the Holy Ghost. When he says go right and go, go, go left, that's the voice of the Holy Ghost. That's not written in Scripture, saints of God. This is prophecy in operation. When God gives you a dream and says don't go with that woman, don't go with that man, that's God's prophetic voice speaking to you. You better listen. You better listen. You better listen. You got to be careful who you listen to. Because some things sound so good. The devil says 99% truth, but that 1% lie fouls it all up. Just like the Muslims, we believe in Jesus. We, 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 we believe he was virgin born and did miracles and he was a holy man. Yes, wonderful. But do you believe he was the son of God and died on the cross? Well, we don't go there. That's not true. Well, you've denied the biblical Jesus. You're a liar. Your prophet's a liar. And you're all on your way to hell if you keep up that lying doctrine. You got to repent. Got to repent. You need the truth. Only the truth will set you free can't walk in the spirit if you're walking in the flesh you can't walk in the spirit if you have no faith you need to have faith saints of God how can you receive the gifts and you, and you say it's not for you it's because you have no faith don't blame God don't blame God now what are some things that stop somebody from walking in the spirit well there's a few things this we can have hindrances now, some people wrongly believe that they're right with God, but they haven't done a soul searching yet. They haven't done a soul cleansing yet. They haven't gone deep enough to know the hidden parts that's separating them from God. And it can be something so small. Sexual vice. You know what we say? We embrace doctrines that Christians can't live free from sin. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The devil doesn't want any Christian to repent of their sin. The devil wants you to think, well, we all sin. Let's just keep sinning and let's just be victory less. Let's be, let's be powerless because Jesus Christ died to set you free. But, but we will never really be free until we see him in glory. So forget about living free here. Just, just keep doing your thing and walking in the flesh. You're already walking in the spirit because you're already say you, you said you believe. I know there's no signs following, but you're fine. You're good. Keep sinning. Keep watching porn. Everybody does it. That does not sound like the voice of the Holy Ghost. Does it? Some of you are confused because that's what they teach. They teach you can't overcome. But how is it? How is it then that Muslims, some Muslims coming from drug abuse past, they somehow overcome their drugs and they, and they live drug free? How did they get the victory? Some of you were drunkards all your life. How did you give up your drunkenness and stop drinking and you can't overcome your sin? Who told you that? The Bible says, whoever the Son sets free is free indeed, for sure. You see, sometimes we, we hold on to doctrines that don't allow us to be free. Now, some of you are what you're going to do to justify your foul doctrine. You're going to point the finger and say, well, what about you? Don't worry about somebody else. You know why? Because they might just be living in willful sin or some kind of sin. You just have to worry about yourself. I'm not going to base my faith on you. You're not my standard. The word of God is my standard. And if you're going to be filled with the Holy One, then it's impossible for you to live unholy. Hallelujah. 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 I feel, I, I feel that there's, there's mental strongholds in this place. That people wondering, wondering, well, 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 where does that leave me? Well, you know where it should leave you? Convicted. That's where it should leave you. It should leave you humble. 
It should leave you in a place to say, Lord, I need you now. That, you see, that's, what it, that's how you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Is when you hold the standard up to where it should be. Holy and perfect and righteous. And when you stand before that righteous God and realize that you're broken. That's when you get on your knees and cry and fast and spend time in the words of God and in prayer. And then you're going to start to see the overflow of emotions come down in tears. Have you suffered until death like Jesus? Have you even suffered for your sin to the point of tears? Where something is so hard? Where you just need to, I'm in the middle of a sermon, brother. Don't interrupt the preacher. Have you ever suffered to the point of tears? Where your tears brought you to a place of repentance? Where your tears... Would keep you in the bedroom seeking God until you get a breakthrough. Have you ever been to that point of agony, of moaning? And I'm not talking about just putting on moaning and making some noise just for the sake of noise. I'm talking about the point where you're trying to overcome something and you're rolling on the floor and you're saying, I'm not going to sin because I have my God. I want my God in my life. Where, where you close your eyes, where you're even willing to put on a blindfold and look like a fool just so that you can walk with God and receive the filling of the Holy Ghost. Have you ever done that? And yet you cry and say, it's not for me. That you say, I'm fine, I'm sanctified already. Well, there's two types of sanctifications. There's the one that brings you close to the Lord, and it's the one that brings you really close to the Lord. Amen. You want to be saved? Amen. You can be sanctified, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? You need to be sanctified in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says those who belong to Christ have crucified their sinful nature and the desires. How can that scripture mean anything unless it was a fact where these people really took God seriously? I believe that there was such a strong anointing on the early church that people would be afraid to sin in the presence of God. Do you know that there was even a, a movement and a, and a teaching where people believed that the moment they get baptized, they could not make one sin after that? Many early church, many of our brothers and sisters would look at us today and disown us. They would look at us and say, I don't think you're saved, brother. I don't think you're saved, sister. Many early church believers that were willing to go to the lion's den for Jesus when they didn't have to. Many early church believers were willing to be burnt at the stake, crucified upside down. For Jesus Christ. And we can't even overcome our masturbation problem. We can't even put down our liquor. We can't even put down our cigarette smoke. We can't even stop lusting and stop lying. When they are willing to give their lives. We say we would give our life for Jesus Christ. But when the pastor calls for the church to evangelize. Only 10 people are found. You say that you would give your heart for Jesus Christ and you walk in the Spirit. I got the Holy Ghost. But when it's time to praise God and pray, we only see five people giving their all and everybody else is looking around as if, they're, as if Kentucky Fried Chicken is around the corner. What's going on, Church of God? Are we lying to ourselves? We want to walk in the Spirit. We want to walk in the Lord. The Bible says whoever walks in the Spirit is not under the law. The law is made for the ungodly. Maybe you're under the law. That means you're under condemnation. You see, God condemned the flesh to the cross with His ordinances and His statutes on the cross. The Bible says that those who walk in the flesh will not inherit the things of God. That means that those who are walking in the flesh will receive the condemnation. Blessed is the man that doesn't condemn himself in the things that he allows. Romans chapter 14. It's talking to Christians. You can condemn yourself. The Bible says that when we eat communion and we don't check our hearts... We bring judgment. We incur judgment on ourselves. That's why some of you are sick. 
And some of you die because we incur judgment on ourselves. And we go through this cycle over and over and we wonder why we're not getting the breakthrough. I always use my workout as an example of where I'm trying to go and where we need to go because I can keep saying every week I want to be slim. I want to be in shape. But if I never, if I never stop eating certain things, stop eating in the night, if I, if I, if I never drink water, it doesn't matter how much I say it, I will never receive it. It's the same thing with the Spirit of the Lord. If you want to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord, you want to walk in the Spirit. You can't just keep saying it. You can't keep coming to church, coming to the altar with an unclean heart. Asking Pastor David to lay his hands on you when your heart is unclean. You're not ready to receive it. And I don't know any I'm not here to judge you. It's not even me. It's Jesus that's going to baptize you. And I, I'm here to tell you today, I, I, I've prayed for people and immediately they speak in tongues. And it's been at moments where I've been at my lowest. Because it has nothing to do with me. When I'm weak, He is strong. His grace is sufficient in my weakness. And some people, I have so much faith. Sometimes I don't have as much faith as I need to. But sometimes I'm full of faith. And I pray. But the person I'm praying for doesn't seem to... Nothing happens. And you have to wonder to yourself. I wonder to myself all the time. I check myself. David, am I walking in faith? Is it me? Am I walking in His power? Saints of God, there can be hindrances, whether it's sexual vice, impurity, unholy desires, bad feelings, unforgiveness, cursing. The things that we saw in Galatians chapter 5, hindrances is what can stop you from walking in the Spirit, even receiving the filling of the Holy Ghost. You see, when this world is large in your life, God's world will be small in your life. When this world is small in your life, God's world, the spiritual life, will be big in your life. Sir, can I say something? No, no, no. He who sows in the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Galatians chapter 6 and 8. When you sow in the Spirit, you will reap the Spirit. You will reap everlasting life. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap the flesh. Very basic things. But we don't see its purpose because we don't know what it will result in. How do you sow in the Spirit? Number one, with your time. What is spiritual? You see, I don't follow teachers that are not spiritual. If I was going to listen to somebody on the YouTube, I'm, I'm going to listen to someone who's spiritual. That has a spiritual experience with God. Someone that believes in the gifts of the Spirit. I ain't listening to nobody. And I encourage you, saints of God, turn off the channel. Once you hear the preacher say the gifts of the Spirit aren't for today, turn the channel. Go the other way. Because they're false teachers. You can quote me on that. You hear that? You can quote me on that. Now there's false prophets too. That, you see, the false teachers will look at the false prophets. But I don't care about the false prophets. They're, they're false too. There's false prophets, but there's false teachers. But then there's that which is true. And that which is true lines up with the Word of God and doesn't deny the power of God hindrances you need to spend time with God time time with God in the spirit time with God spiritual things the word of God is spiritual spend time reading the spiritual words of God the Bible spend time in spiritual things like prayer prayer is antithetical it's opposite to the flesh the flesh doesn't want to pray you know if you're walking by the spirit by your prayer life I know so many people say, well, yeah, I'm strong in reading, but I'm not strong in prayer. That means you're not spiritual. How can you, how can you have a relationship with God and you never talk with God? You're all ears, but you're no heart. 
You have to talk with God. Commune with God. I don't know any man, I don't know any woman that's in love with somebody that doesn't want to talk with their spouse. It's going to be one minute. No, I'm preaching, man. man. Hallelujah. I don't know any person. Look at this for a second. Six I'm not looking at that. No, no, look at I'm not looking at you. There's a reason. Hallelujah. And I'm you can't, you don't that. touch me. No, but I get away I'm telling you in the name of Jesus you. Christ, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. The devil is no good. That's the devil is a liar. You, you, you know away, what? I'm away from this. this is, go. I'm going to tell you something. This morning I had a dream. Three dreams. You know what my dreams were? In the morning when I was sleeping on my bed, I had this wicked cat come and jump on my back and was attacking me. And I was, get off my back, get off my back. And, the, and the, the cat didn't want to get off my back. But I kept fighting off that cat. Get off my back. Get off my back. Another part of my dream. I was walking towards the things of God. And I don't know where this happened. A big spider web jumps in my face. This happened this morning. Big spider web. I walked through the spider web. I'm walking forward. And a spider web tries to hold me in. And, and, and the spider tries to jump on side. And I get off of me. Get off of me. And I'm walking still. You know what I noticed? In this walk, the more I talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the more demons show up. The more I get attacked, the more the, de the devil doesn't want you to know this. Because the moment that you're walking in the Spirit, the devil has no power over your life. He has no power over your life. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why the devil hates me. It's not because I'm perfect. It's because I ain't giving up. I ain't giving up. I'm going towards the Lord. I'm going towards the Lord. And I'm going to keep pressing in until I get the glory of the Lord in my life in its fullness. You sow in the spirit and you will reap the spirit. You sow in the spirit. You need to pray. You need to pray. I'm going to go on here and, and uh, talk about another thing. You know, if you want to walk in the spirit, you need to present your body as a living sacrifice. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God, which is your reasonable service. You want to walk by the spirit, the body, the flesh, the things of the world need to be dead. You need to put that on the altar. You need to make a decision saying no more. This is my sacrifice to the Lord. God is going to get everything from my life. God is going to get everything from my life. And I'm going to make myself available for the Lord. You see, when you're dead, when you're on the altar, when you're dead, that's when you can... That's when God can use you. You see, when you're a broken vessel, God can come in and fix you. When you're an empty vessel, God can fill you. But God can't fill somebody that has their vessel already filled with their own sin and their own desires and their own fleshly ways. This is why I marvel I marvel when, I, when, when you mention certain passages to, of the Word of God to certain people and they say, well, I, I'm not convicted of that yet. Well, get convicted. The Word of God says it. So believe it. I'm not there yet. Well, you know what? You know, there's a lot of places I'm not there yet, but when you call me out, I'm like, I'm there with you, brother. Let's walk this journey. Last week we had the Olympics. I'm not a long distance runner, but I said I'm getting in that race. Amen. Even if I have to walk the extra mile, even if I have to be the last in the line, I'm going to run with you. Why? Because I'm going to get in shape and I'm going to be a winner like everybody else going through the finish line. Doesn't matter how slow you are. Doesn't matter how in shape you are. Doesn't matter where you are. As long as you're willing to say, I will come with you, brother. 
You know, when you started out in the Lord, you weren't all so perfect. You weren't put together. But something convicted you and you had enough faith to walk the mile. You didn't realize what was coming for you. You didn't realize that there were demons ready to attack you. You didn't realize. Some of you thought when you came, became a Christian, everything was going to be perfect. You thought that. My life sucks. Now I'm going to get a, a better life. I'm going to accept Jesus. And then the moment you accepted Jesus, you lost your job. You lost your friends. Your dad thinks you're crazy. Your mom thinks you're weird. And everyone turns their back on you. Your neighbors don't want to talk to you. And, and then you look to God and say, God, I thought you were going to bless my life. What you don't realize is that God is blessing your life. He's preparing you for something even greater. But you've got to learn to appreciate it. And lay aside the things that matter. Those things don't matter. you got to learn to let go of your pride. Your neighbor's opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion of your mom and your dad doesn't matter if it's opposed to the Lord. It doesn't matter what everybody else says. Who friends leave you? If they were real friends, they would have stayed with you anyway. You see, God wants you to get over the things of this world. So you can be above the things of this world. You see... His friends, Jesus' friends leaving him didn't stop Jesus from going to the cross. The, the ridicules that Jesus went through didn't stop Jesus from preaching. The family members of Jesus that, that made fun of him didn't stop Jesus from doing miracles. The Pharisees that accused Jesus of being Beelzebub and, and, and walking by the power of Beelzebub, he still continued to raise the dead, heal the sick, and cast out demons. He still did it anyway. You know why? Because his mind was above and not on the earth. This is how you walk in the Spirit, saints. This is how you walk in the Spirit. You have to present your body as a living sacrifice. Another way to walk in the Spirit is by praying in the Spirit. Very interesting. I've spoken about this so many times. Praying in the Spirit. If there's such thing as praying in the Spirit, that means there's such thing as praying in the flesh. Am I right? Now one thing that's easy for everybody is praying according to the will of God. That's spiritual. That's a spiritual prayer. If you pray Scripture, you can't be wrong. Amen? You can't be wrong by praying Scripture. But sometimes people don't know which scripture applies to me. Well, that means you need to get to know God. But how do I know God? Well, you can say by reading the word. But is study just is study good enough? So many people study the word of God and, and they don't know God. Well, this is where we get down to experience. You need, if you want to know God, you need to have an experience with God. You need to have an experience with God to know God. You need to have an experience with God to know His Spirit. You need to have an experience with God to move in the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit. You need to have an experience. But pastor, how do we have an experience? How do we have an experience? Well, you need to sow in the Spirit. You need to pray. You need to ask the Lord. Spend time with God. Surrender your body. You know, if you wanted to start somewhere, the best place to start is repenting of your sin. Getting everything out of the way. That's the best place to start. You see, if I wanted to get in shape, the best place to start is in my kitchen boards. Get rid of the potato chips. Throw away the pot. Throw away the alcohol, the beer, whatever it is, the nachos, the pretzels. Throw it away. I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be amazing if somebody started a career to keep people accountable to their diets in the sense that they'll go to your home and put a chain on your kitchen door. You'll have to make an agreement to put a, a GoPro on you at all times, a tracker on your car and in your shoe, just so that ever, if ever somebody sees you walk into No Frills or Fresh Co., or, or to, to Harvey's, access to your phone. Somebody, I'm giving somebody a career idea. And so anytime and there's an alarm, there's, it's like a child proof on your, on your computer, a camera in your house. Wouldn't it be great 
so that that person is guaranteed to lose weight. Well, saints of God, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, and the, the thing that you should start off with is getting rid of the blockages, the things in your way. And when you get things out of the way, then the only thing that's before you is God and the devil. That's it. If you get the flesh out of the way, you're going to hear two voices. Well, you might hear three. You might hear your flesh groaning. Give it back to me. You'll be surprised how, how loud that voice can be. You think it's a demon. That groaning in the belly. Give me back that burger. The taste buds will, will start to manifest even though you're not eating anything. Then the devil will come. You can, you can eat, you know. But then God is going to be there. Come closer. Come closer. Getting rid of sin is the first step. Saints of God. Obeying the promptings of the Holy Ghost. My sheep hear my voice and follow. I'm going to close off with these few sayings from Reinhard Bonnke. This is what he says when it comes to walking in the Spirit, walking by faith. He says, don't plan what is in your pocket. Plan what is in God's pocket. Faith is a kind of immune system filtering out fears that otherwise would paralyze all activities. Faith is a leap into the light, not a step into darkness. Faith is not a presumption, but assumption. You rightly assume that God will never let you down and thus enter into rest. Faith is not the absence of fear. It is the conquest of fear. Faith is the vital principle of prayer. Faith removes mountains which unbelief creates. Go for the purposes of God and the means to fulfill them will follow. God always hears prayer. He cannot make it obvious but he hears every time we move our lips. God always works with workers and moves with movers, but he does not sit with sitters. You understand that one? You can't sit with God. God answers prayer. For every deadline, he will throw you a lifeline. Keep believing and be blessed. God has a thousand year calendar with only one day marked on it. It is marked today. I don't want to play with marbles when God told me to move mountains. That means you've got to think bigger. Don't, don't limit yourself. Jesus showed us how to live as the Son of Man so that we would know how to live as children of God. Prayer is faith in action. Praying for God to work is fine, but praying for Him to do what he, we should be doing is pointless. I'm going to say that one again. Praying for God to work is fine, but praying for Him to do what we should be doing is pointless. What did Jesus tell you to do? Go out and preach. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out demons. He already gave us authority. The Bible... My phone just died. Praise the Lord. Can somebody praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I got enough. I got enough. I got to move by the Spirit. Amen. I want everybody to stand to their feet. Hallelujah. Walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I was saying briefly and I went somewhere else. I said, you know, if there's a prayer in the Spirit, there's a prayer in the flesh. You know, when we're praying in the flesh, we're praying with doubt. We're praying with fear. We're praying with pride. We're not letting the Spirit of God take control. We're thinking too much. We're reasoning too much. But when you get into the Spirit, when you pray in the Spirit, when you praise God in the Spirit, the Spirit takes control of your tongue, of your words, of your praise. And you know it's different because it's not you thinking too much and reasoning in your head, wondering, does God hear me? No. You see, when you pray in faith, 
When you pray in the Spirit, you're praying in faith. You're believing God. You're feeling God. You're letting the Spirit of God move inside of you, opposed to you just rationalizing everything in your head and, and keeping everything in your mind. You see, some of you can't get there because there's so much things in your heart that you don't want to let go. Flesh, sin, emotions, doctrines that are not even godly, not biblical. I want everybody to close their eyes here today. Why don't we do what the best thing to do is, is search our hearts. Search our hearts. Don't say to yourself, I'm fine, because you're not. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you're not moving like Jesus, Jesus said, greater things than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. If you're not walking like that, if you're not walking like the saints of old, you're not fine. You still need some work to go, and there's nothing wrong with being humble and saying, I need more work done in my life. There's nothing wrong with that, because that's the start to change. If everyone can close their eyes, and if there's anything in your heart, be honest with the Lord. You need to talk to the Lord. I don't know how much you want God or don't want God. I don't know how much you want to play games or just really just surrender, but this is for you. This is for you. If there's anything in your heart today, I want you to lay it down before the Lord. And stop believing that you can't lay it down. That's the devil. The devil doesn't want you to lay it down. The devil wants you to hold on to that sin for as long as you can. The devil wants you to believe that you can never overcome that sin in your life. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You can overcome it if you really want to. Because God's grace is made perfect in our weaknesses. God's power is more than able to shake that chain off of your life if you're willing. I want you to talk to the Lord today. and Ask the Lord to take that chain off of you. Whatever that is that's holding your heart. It could be unbelief. This could be the day where you repent of some foul doctrine coming from the internet, coming from preachers that don't believe in the power of God. Today can be your day to get a breakthrough. You need to believe in God. The Bible says love believes all things. Who is God? Of course God can do all things. Of course God can pour out His Spirit upon you like in the day of Pentecost. Of course He can do it. Of course He can do it. Hallelujah. I don't hear anybody... Talking to the Lord here. Could be a sin in your life and you're holding on to it. You know what it is. I don't know what it is. You know what it is. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil make you point fingers at somebody else. Listen, everyone will individually stand before the Lord. Talk to God. Repent. Confess. The Bible says if we confess, He is faithful. You need to get it out of your system. Get it out of your system. Make today a new day for you, saints of God. And if there's everything that you've done, listen, you're going to get freedom. You're going to get freedom when you let go of your burdens. You know, the more that I work out, I feel lighter every day because I'm getting rid of the extra weight on my life. If it's sin, there's weight. You might not even know. You might have been living with that extra weight. For so long, you don't even realize it's extra weight. But it's extra weight. And that's the very thing that's blocking you from receiving the goodness of the Lord, the fullness of God in your life. Get rid of that weight today. Talk to the Lord. Whatever it is, if you need to confess something, just say it out loud. Just get it out of your chest. Ask the Lord to forgive you. His blood was shed for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It could be pride today, saints of God. we got to break our pride. So much pride. So much pride. Don't worry about nobody else. That's why we say close your eyes. Stop worrying about anybody else around you. Nobody. Everybody's on this battle. And we're just here to help each other get stronger. We're all fighting. We're all walking this journey. So don't feel so bashful and proud to think that if someone knows about my struggle... They're not going to like me. God likes you. God loves you. While we were sinners, God 
sent his son to die for you. Don't worry about what you did. There is forgiveness for you. There is hope for you. There is life for you. And when you have released that burden and, and that burden has been lifted off of your chest, I want you to just to praise God and keep praising God. And this is what I want you to do, saints of God. I want you to get to the place where your praise is bigger than your flesh. Where you're starting to praise God in the Spirit. Where you're letting the Spirit of God, and if you don't know what that feels like, you don't know the difference, ask the Lord to fill you with His Spirit so that you can praise Him. The Bible says He desires those who worship Him to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, saints of God. The Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When your heart is empty and full of praise, when God is there, and if, and if you want God there, entertain the things of God. Pray according to the word. Praise is a good thing to do. Praise means something's coming out of your lips. Praise God until that praise fills every part of your being. That's how you do it. You want to know how to do it? Walk in the Spirit. Pray according to the word. Praise God according to the word. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That means something has to come out of your lips, saints of God. And don't just stop with a praise God and stop because somebody else stopped. That's flesh. You're still doing it in the flesh. You're worrying about the person beside you. You need to stop doing that, saints of God. CFM, come on, C CFM. Praise God like you mean it. Praise God from your heart. Open your lips and praise Him from your heart. Stop thinking in the flesh. Stop reasoning in your mind. And start to praise God like you love Him. Feel your praise. Feel your praise with God. This is not time to think too much in doubt. I, I see a lot of doubt in this place. A lot of nervousness. A lot of pride. Come on, let it go. Let it go. You can't receive from God walking in the flesh. Come on, you got to walk in faith. Walk in faith. What faith means, you're believing God. You're knowing God for who He is. Praising God for who He is. He deserves a bigger praise than this. He deserves more from you than this, this silent, passive treatment. Silent treatment. Don't give God the silent treatment today. Talk to God even if you have to cry to get it out. You might be shy, but let go of that shyness for the, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, saints of God. Come on, saints of God. Don't just close your mind. Don't worry about nobody else. Hallelujah. 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 You don't need a worship team to praise God. You need an experience with God. What has God done for you? Talk to God, saints. Worship Him. Worship Him. What will your worship look like? What should worship look like? What should spiritual worship look like? Come on, saints of God, be spiritual. Get into the Spirit today. Let the Spirit of God fill your heart and your vocal cords and your mind and your eyes and every part of your being. Love Him with everything today. If that is everything, then amen. But if it's not everything and you're still holding back, give Him everything. Give Him your mind. Give Him your heart. Give Him your soul. You see, your soul is your body, your emotions. Can you feel the Lord today? Do you want to feel the Lord? Feel His presence. His Spirit feels a certain way. It's not fleshly. It's not demonic. It's not weird. It's full of joy. It's full of peace. It's full of love. It's full of faith. What does faith feel like today? Come on, press in, saints of God. Hallelujah. 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 Saints of God. God loves you. Come on. Let go of that sin. Let go of those burdens that are holding you back. For those of you that are in the spirit, know how to get into the spirit. You get into the spirit and you pray. You pray in the spirit. Some people don't know what it feels like and what it means to pray in the spirit. Some people are stifling other people. Stop letting the devil be that, that, that quenching voice, that spirit that's trying to stop your neighbor from getting into the spirit. I rebuke you, you wicked spirits. Let the people of God go. Come off of them. 
We break that chain, that lying voice that wants to hinder the praise of God. Stop letting a hindering spirit, an intimidating spirit, stop the people of God from praising. You may not understand it. You humble yourself in the sight of God and let the people praise God, even if it sounds weird to you. Don't be afraid to be like a child today and cry unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Kids, they know how to step out of faith. They can't speak the language. They say goo goo gaga, ba 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 ba. They, they cry to the Lord because they're reaching out. They're stepping out of faith with whatever they got. They don't understand nothing, but they love God. They love their parents. They need help. Call unto the Lord. Call unto the Lord. Don't be afraid of our Father. Don't be afraid of our Father, saints. Whatever the need, let God fill your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints of God. Saints of God. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you, Lord God, and we just pray that you would do something in our lives. That there would be a, a desire for you, that you would give us a pouring out of your spirit. Because Father God, we cannot do it without your grace. Without your power. So many just don't know what to do and how to reach out to you. But Lord God, teach us. Teach us how to reach out to you. Send your angels to edify the CFM churches. So that they too can pray in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and be guided by the Spirit. Lord God, we want to know what it feels like to be walking in power, walking in miracles. We want to know what it feels like to hear your voice. We want to know what it what feels like to walk in holiness. We want to know what it feels like to walk in love. Lord, help our unbelief today. Help us, oh Father. Just like the Olympics last week and many of us were out of shape. Father, Lord, many of us might be out of shape spiritually today. But let it be a sign to press in throughout the week. So when we come back again next week, that we're walking in the power of God. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Cover them under your blood. Bless the food that we're about to eat. And if there's anybody here today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you're saying today I want to give my life to him. Just want you to raise your hand if you're here. And you're saying that's me, Pastor. I want to give my life to the Lord. If there's anybody in this room, in this park. That's ready to give their life to the Lord. Today might be your day. Amen. Amen. We have a gentleman. He's going to get baptized today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else here today? Amen. Well, Father God, we just pray for this brother. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We'll pray for you again, brother. Hallelujah. God, why don't you come up, brother? Just come up. My, my siblings. You want me my to family. pray for your family? Yes. So you're standing here on behalf of your family. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray for these two, two gentlemen, and we pray first for Emery's family as he stands the gap in faith. That was a step of faith. I love his, man, his faith. He stepped out believing that if he would come to the altar, Lord, that you would see his faith for his family. Father, Lord, bless his faith. May his family come to you as he walked up to this altar. May they walk to the altar of God today and give their lives to you in Jesus' mighty name and fill them with the Holy Ghost. And we pray for this young man, Lord, who's been coming for many weeks. I've seen him changing, turning his life around bringing his mother and his brother. And now he's saying, I want to get baptized. 
Lord, we pray that you would fill him with the Holy Ghost and that today would be a new day for him. That he would accept you as his Lord and Savior and not turn back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Father, Lord, bless the food. Bless our time. Dismiss and bring people home safely. In Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, amen. amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Shake five people's hands around you and say hello to somebody. Say hello to somebody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.